My name is Bayan Rice. I'm a third generation wine grower, and I've been making wine for over two decades here in Santa Barbara wine country. It's more than a job, it's a calling. Join me as I talk to my fellow winemakers in a series that is a candid conversation between winemakers discussing their wines, their craft, and their lives over two glasses of wine. My name is Brian Rice and welcome to Two Glasses In. I'm sitting here with world famous Michael Larner, who's the winemaker and viticulturist for his Larner family estate. I've had the privilege of knowing you since you got here into the valley and, and, and it's great, you know, being a part of this community with you, Michael. And, but I will say it's been a, a real pleasure watching your vineyards grow and develop into an internationally acclaimed vineyard site in Santa Barbara. Your vineyards now, uh, what, how old is it now? This is a, a, for us, this is a great vintage. This is our 20th anniversary of growing grapes and our 10th anniversary of making wine. Wow. Yeah, wow. So, so this is a huge monumental. milestone yeah. for you, too. Yeah. I understand you were a geologist you, before you got into viticulture. Yeah. Why don't you tell me a little bit about geology? Or do you geek out on it still? Yeah, no. It's, uh, so before I went into the whole world of wine, born and raised in Los Angeles, my father was a cinematographer. My mother was a business owner. Their dream... It was their, their baby was to eventually have a little vineyard. And so they started taking trips and, and eventually from Los Angeles to here, it's a two hour drive, they, they plopped themselves down here. And I was just being myself, being a geologist, working in Colorado as a geotech engineer, a lot of engineering stuff. And I get this phone call from the folks like, hey, we're gonna buy a ranch. We need some muscle, are you in? I'm like, uh, okay, <laughs> you know, I trust you guys, you raised me pretty well. And fell in love with everything. Fell in love with the business, the not just the winemaking, but the sales part, the stories that are told. Well, and of course, the geology of it. Geology is such an integral part of and that our was the, science. They, the, that was, sorry to use the pun, the foundation for mm -hmm. me was like, wow, I understand a lot of this. I understand the vineyard differentiation. You know, but then also pulling on my historical context. I, as a kid, I lived in Italy for five years. I was exposed to wine. It was, it was on the dinner table. I mean, in, in America, we have salt, pepper, and ketchup. Yeah. In, in Italy, it's salt, pepper, and wine, right? I mean, we need to, we need to make that transformation. Couldn't but agree more. That intricacy of how more complex the plot got is probably what gets you more and more in love with the business. Yeah. Because all of a sudden you realize, I have to be a jack of all trades. I have to be able to understand, not just from grape to glass, but from getting that glass into your hand. And whether that's you coming to visit us where you're on my turf or me trying to get into your turf, into a restaurant or do a wine tasting at a wine bar, it really becomes a, a really fascinating dynamic for a winemaker because especially like you and I, we're, we're business owners, we are, we are the face of the brand. So we have to do a lot of that footwork ourselves. And so the funny thing about being a geologist is you're outdoors. You love being outdoors and you don't want to be stuck in a lab coat doing chemical reactions. So the gregarious nature of being a geologist who wants to be outdoors was an easy transformation for me to get into wine. And I think building upon that was experiences working locally, working at Harvest of Babcock. We call it the University of Babcock. Brian's an amazing teacher. It was great to be working with a neighbor. So I went to UC Davis, got a master's of viticulture enology. So that's great. Now I just dissected wine and it became a little bit unromantic for a moment because you're like, wow, I understand all the chemicals but how does this all translate to making wine? So you got the theoretical education. I got the theory, and, then, and, and then I said, you know what? I'm going old world. So I went to France, I worked for Gigal, I worked for Antinori in Tuscany. Um, so I set these internships up, focusing on producers that are Syrah based, mm -hmm. but at the same time world renowned, because I know that they have a style that's unique and, and recognize And they're not necessarily going off textbook, are they? They're, no, they're... and that's the amazing thing when you work for a company like that, because you walk in and, and you're slinging your guns, telling everybody you're so smart, you came from Davis, <laughs> here's what you should do, and they look at you like, whatever. You know, we've been doing this for thousands of years, right? So you realize there's this, there's this sort of you know, medium where you walk in and, and you're like, okay, well, I'm gonna learn from you. So this is our uh, 2017 estate GSM blend, I call it Elemental. Basically you make this every year. The, the golden rule within the family is that Grenache must be the dominant player, mainly because we're looking for a wine that is very food friendly and very compatible with multiple dishes on the table. So Grenache has this beautiful ability to bring in like velvet tones, a softness that is really unparalleled by other varietals. And then 
But then you also need to balance that sort of soft velvet tones. You also need a little bit more firm mid-body, and that's where Syrah comes into play. And then a little spiciness on the back end from the more red rep. For sure, spicy, loving yeah. this. Do you do whole cluster ferments? No, so this is uh, all 100% destemmed fruit. It's all uh, aged separately for two years, and it's all the lots, uh, the picks, everything's aged separately, all neutral barrels. Mm. Uh, and then at the two year mark, we blend them back together. And I'm saying we in this case, because I'm the winemaker, but whenever we do blends or sort of look through the, the wines and sort of classify them, I bring in my winemaking team, which is my wife, sister, and mother. So, so clearly I'm always right when we talk about stuff. <laughs> we just kind of you know, look, at the, look at the barrels, look at the structure of each wine and sort of determine where they're going to go, which ones play well together. Mm -hmm. And that's what ultimately ends up being in the, in the, uh, the elemental. Oh, it's beautiful. Well done. I think you're a smart man for bringing your wife and mother into the process. I do that with my team, my staff as well at Artiste, and they, it's so much more enjoyable to share the experience of blending with others versus sitting in a lab by yourself, you know, with a graduated cylinder trying to make the world's greatest wine. So the amazing thing about a blend is like, it's not like there's a holy grail, like, oh, it has to taste like this. No, blends are hedonistic. They're, this is what I want it to taste like. I can go outside the boundaries of, of wine and play around and tinker with different combinations. So. You need that grounding rod. You need the you need you need those other other people to sort of be like, whoa, hang on, Mike, come back in here, <laughs> because you've got all these great variables, but we want it to be consistent and we want it to taste really flavorful from year after year. So the idea is to have that panel helps you sort of you know bring in different aspects. So you, at the end of the day, you're like, yeah, that that's still a Larner wine because the Larners voted on it, but it also has some of the unique attributes for that vintage. Mm. I love it. And when I look at um, you know, the wines that I make from the estate, Syrah, Grenache, Mourvedre, Viognier, Malvasia, they all have this overlying mineral tone that I don't get in other parts of, of the world or Santa Barbara County. And I think that's amazing because you know, as a geologist, I love to think that, oh yeah, you know, I, there's so much I understand about the soil and there's so much I understand about farming, but as a winemaker, I'll, I'll say, you know what, this time the land can speak louder than I do. I'll let the land talk. And that's what we try to showcase at Larner is, is proving that that soil is unique. And then those signature traces come through in the wine. And, and so I always get this beautiful minerality. I, it's, so, it's so fascinating. It's, it's a wet stone. It's, it's almost like a flinty character or, or mm -hmm. something like that, that you might get in some whites in other regions, but I don't see it in all of your wines. In all the wines I make, there's always something there like, hey, there's, there's Larner, there's Ballard Canyon. You know, it's kind of in there. I want to say it's the case for Santa Barbara County is, is we're all born from the ocean. We're all born from these marine sediments. And in my vineyard, I see that very well showcased. If you go to the top of my hill at 680 feet elevation and you flip over a stone, sometimes you'll pick up a rock and you're like, hey, cool, there's a fossilized seashell in here. Other times you'll pick up a rock and find basically like pieces of chalk or chert or something like that. And each one of those stones is telling you a story about where they were formed, which tells you what was going on on the, on the land before. So to give you an example, 20 million years ago, our properties were underwater and down by San Diego, and they've been <laughs> riding up to the north on the south side of San Andreas Fault and basically coming up out of the ocean. And so on the top of my hill, I'll find sandstone with fossilized seashells in them. In the middle of the vineyard, I'll find chalk, just fractured and friable chalk, with uh, some sand on top of it. And then as you get to the lower elevations, you'll find chert. And so that, that fossilized sandstone is, is basically coastal environment. The chalk is, you know, sort of shallow marine, old coral reefs. And then the chert is deep marine sediment. So all of that is aquatic and was under the ocean is now sitting at 600 feet elevation. So all of, all of this land came up and is now sitting at this elevation that the vines are so happy growing into because it's, it's an alkaline soil, they love it. And it sort of tells a fascinating story about Santa Barbara's wine country that you see it, diatomaceous earth on the west side, serpentine soils on the east side. So you have this wonderful sort of kaleidoscope of marine depositional environments that are all now where we grow our, our vines in. Our state Syrah is also aged similar to the Grenache Rome or blend. This is aged two years, but now we start to bring in a little bit of new oak. So on this particular vintage, which is 2016, we have about 38% new oak. So roughly four out of 10 barrels are brand new French oak barrels. There we go. I love the sound of that. 
So again, age two years, about 40% new oak. This actually is five different uh, clonal lots. So basically separate blocks that were all picked separately on a separate day, fermented separately, aged separately, and then put back together at that two year mark. Cheers. Wow, that's a heavy wine. Very big, bold aromas, great color, absolutely dark. Thank you. It's coating the walls like paint. This wine, I think, is sort of like the heart and soul of Larner. It's, it is bold, it is opulent and strong. I, at the same time, I have to admit that it has a soft side to it. You know, there's a warmth feeling it gives out. And I think that's kind of the style of winemaker that I am. And it's really hard because as winemakers, we find the challenge, how do we make a wine that satisfies so many people? And Syrah is one of the few varieties that represents this happy medium between being on the forefront of bold, but still a little bit refined so that it's not in that aggressive bold category like Cabernet, Cabernet Franc, Merlot. So if you look at an old geologic map and you see all the different layers on there, on the side there's always this beautiful stratigraphic column. And it shows you the name of the formation, the age of the formation, and it kind of gives you a chronologic event of how these all deposited uh, or formed, whether it's a lava flow or sandstone or something like that. And so that stratigraphic soil column was the crux of what we want to do with the label. So we basically took that and cropped it over multiple wines so that each wine ends up getting a piece of that stratigraphic soil column, which is a unique piece of artwork. So every label will have slightly different soil contexts. And that soil actually speaks a little bit to the wine. So to give you an example, this crop is basically looks like fractured rock, which yeah. is perfect for Syrah because it's bold. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it has some sort of like structure to it. And it's made up of multiple blocks, five different clonal selections. So again, you have this fracture pattern. So, mm -hmm. so even though it just looks like a simple stratigraphic piece of, of column on soil, to me, it's such, so much more because there's, there's pieces in here that indicate what the it's wine is about. It's showing the site. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, that's really neat. Very clever. What is gonna make these wines showcase the best is when you have dust of the vineyard on your shoes. Because mm -hmm. you're out there seeing where it's grown, you're out there seeing the context of what it is. And as a geologist, that's perfect because we're always dusty in our dirt. But I mean, the idea of experiencing it firsthand to see it is, I think, the, the destination that I want to, to uh, educate people on, to have them come out and experience it. I think it's what Santa Barbara's all about. We offer so much great, Diversity of climate, diversity of things to do, diversity of excellent restaurants and hotels. So why not make it also a fun experience to come out? Uh, you also opened up a tasting room in Los Olivos. And yeah, well, how's that going? That's great. I mean, you know, it's funny. I like to call it the most intimate tasting room because square footage wise, it's probably only about 20 square feet. It's very small. It's like a broom closet. It might be like three telephone booths. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> but that's what we need. We need to achieve that, the intimacy, because we are a small family winery. We make 1,400 cases annual production. I always like to say it's a little bit more than I can drink alone. So Los Olivos is a wonderful place to do that. It has tons of tasting rooms, tons of shopping experiences. And in fact, my wife realized that not only did we need to open a tasting room, we also needed to complement something in Los Olivos that seemed like it was fading away, which is retail. And so she created this concept, the Los Olivos General Store. It was basically a modern take on old classic. We took this the beautiful old gas station, poured gas, and it was the longest running gas station in California up until like 1997. Uh -huh. In the beginning, we didn't think we were gonna have a tasting room there, so we actually made that little three telephone booth size space my wife's art gallery. And my wife's a very talented artist. She paints using wine. As a winemaker, I would never expect to see so much depth, so much layering from from just using wine. I remember the first days when you were developing the pigments with her. I yeah. Mean, you were literally building through a chemical process. I yeah, think, I, I, her, when her, I was at Davis, I was like, wait a minute, yeah. let's, let's play with this. So we started shifting the pH of wine, changing it from blue to green to brown. I helped her and she helped me learn about, you know, the color and the layering. To see her artwork being displayed there was, you know, so proud. After a couple of years, I was like, well, we need to start selling some wine. So we, open our little tasting room there and have, have basically created this little satellite for us to sort of get people exposed to our brand while we're waiting for the big mothership to open on the estate, which, you know, is coming soon. Mm -hmm. so. Well, Michael, this has been such a pleasure. I really appreciate having you on the show and thank you for sharing your story with us. Thank you. Salud. Salud.